Hey, what's up everybody, Chris here. So today I wanted to talk about Cohere's blog post. Uh, as you can see, they have embedded millions of Wikipedia articles in many languages. I mean, they did what they said, right? Essentially what they did is they took a ton of pages from Wikipedia in all kinds of languages and they embedded them. And then they released all of those embeddings along with the title of the page that the embeddings are from and the text that was embedded. So you might be thinking to yourself, hey, a second, Chris, that sounds cool, but what is it embedding, right? Like, what are we talking about here? An embedding is a numerical representation of a string or bunch of words or one word or whatever it is. It is a numeric representation of text. In this specific case, Cohere has developed a model that takes as input uh, text and then outputs a list of 768 numbers, in this case, floating points. And essentially, that is the vector representation of that particular string of letters or language, right? So like in this case, are you open on weekends becomes a 768 long list of floating point numbers. Those floating point numbers are what you might call vectors or embeddings. And essentially what they do is they map where that sentence lives in some high dimensional space. But we don't need to care about that really because this 2D example works perfectly and is almost completely analogous to what's happening in uh, actuality. So as you can see, these two utterances here, are you open on weekends? and a Japanese version of Are You Open on Weekends appear close together in, in this embedding space because they are close together in meaning. And we see this extra utterance over here, this do you do delivery, and it is far because it is not as semantically related, right? And that's just a fancy way of saying it doesn't mean the same thing. What embeddings help us to do is determine how closely related two different chunks of text are. And why that's useful is because if we can determine what two chunks of text are close to each other, we can leverage that for a bunch of different applications, right? So Wikipedia is a huge source of information, of course. It's got a, a lot of text and it would be very difficult to search through all that text and compare like, hey, how close are these things? Well, Cohere has given us all the embeddings of a lot of text on Wikipedia, right? 129 plus gigabytes worth of just English embeddings. They've turned that text into numbers for us so that we can determine how closely related some other chunk of text is to anything that exists in those embeddings. And what we can do with that is we can essentially search for passages in Wikipedia that are most close to the thing we want to search. So as a quick example, we'll just look at their first use case, which is this neural search system. We use a process by which we convert this text into an embedding. Then we see what vectors or embeddings are closest to it. And then we return the relevant text to the user. And that's it, right? But you might think to yourself, well, well, that's not a lot. What, you know, how is that crazy? Well, it's all of Wikipedia, right? I mean, when you, when you search on Wikipedia, it does a great job, but it doesn't do nearly as good of a job as if we could search all of the text, all of the passages by their vector representations to see which were closest to our query. The implementation of this is also extraordinarily straightforward, right? All we're doing is we have our query. We embed that query using... Uh, Cohere's multilingual model. Uh, so this is their multilingual 2212 model. We retrieve the embedding from it. We compute the dot score between the query embedding and the document embedding. So what that means is we essentially say, hey, which is this closest to in all of the embeddings that we have? And then we return the top three results in this case, you know, you, that's totally up to you, which you choose. And it spits out an answer. And that's really like the whole thing, right? You just have to embed your query, retrieve the embeddings, compare and see, hey, wh wh which of all of the embeddings of the millions of pages of Wikipedia you have is this closest to, and then you will receive a response 
And the way that you get that particular response, you you can retrieve the actual text uh, because it's provided alongside those embeddings. Now, the rest of the blog is fantastic. It gets into some more uh, you know options about what we can do with this technology. And there's a call to action at the end in which they invite you to join their Discord uh, and show off whatever you decide to build with this particular technology. So how do we get start using this? Well, they have their data set here available on Hugging Face. So as you can see, when we look at the data set itself on Hugging Face, we can kind of look and see what this looks like. So we have this title, which is just the title of the page this is from. We have the text, which is the actual text that was embedded plus the title. So the way that they embedded these was title plus space plus text. So they're all embedded in that same way. We have the URL, which is the page that this is from, which is huge. We have the wiki ID, which is its reference on actual Wikipedia, as well as some views, paragraphs, additional uh, information that we could leverage using, say, uh, Wikipedia's API or however we wanted to view or parse this. We, can, we have some extra information, which is always just great. And then we have these embeddings, which is just going to be a list 768 items long of floating point numbers, right? And this is this is all the magic, right? So using this particular string of numbers, we can determine how close an utterance or a another embedded vector is to this. So let's look and see how we do that in Colab. They provide some demos, and so I'm just gonna walk through one of those. First things first, you will need a Cohere API key in order to do this. Uh, everything that you can do in the demo is absolutely covered by the free trial. So if you don't have an account, you can just sign up for one. You'll get sent to this dashboard here, and you can just click on the API keys sidebar and copy your uh, API key right from here. And then we can hop into the actual collab. In the collab, we will need to uh, get some requirements. Of course, we will need the uh, Cohere library as well as Hugging Face data sets. Uh, you can go ahead and throw your API key right into this field. Uh, I've done this here, but hidden it so that I don't expose my API key. And then all we really need to do is run this particular cell. They set it for a thousand. I juiced it up to 10,000 just to see if I could get any other interesting pages. Um, if you want to do the whole thing, just to be clear, it would take a while. There's 130 gigabytes in the English embeddings alone. So, um, you know, definitely it, it, it might take you a while to download all this. So I would stick to a random sample. So as you can see, we have uh, gotten 10,000 of these uh, documents as well as the embeddings. And we can look at the first entry in docs and see that we get a dictionary that has the title, that has the text, that has the URL and the ID. So exactly as we just saw on the Hugging Face data sets, as well as that embedding vector, which is just a big vector. So how long is that vector exactly? Well, 768, just like we discussed. And they're all going to be that. Um, and that's important. We have to stay in Cohere's embeddings right if we say got a embedding from some other model that was a different length or even the same length it wouldn't perform in the way we would expect and so it's important that we're using cohere's embedding model here um, in order to get those embeddings so we have our embeddings which are 10,000 rows and they have 768 columns each each is a float so we can look at this in action. I'll just explain the code a little bit here. So first of all, we have our query, of course, which is just our question. Uh, I've asked it, what is uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle in English? We embed the text. We select the model that we want to embed with. In this case, the multilingual 2212 model. Then we get from the response our embeddings and we cast those to a tensor. Once we have the embeddings, we go on to calculate the dot scores. We use torches.mm in order to do this across all of our uh, embeddings. And then we just grab the top K, which is using torches top K. Uh, in this case, we're using the top three, but you can do whatever you'd like here. Top five, top 10, 
Uh, totally up to you. And then all we have to do is we just grab the actual ID and use that to get us our title and text from our query. As you can see, it performs basically as we'd expect. We get uh, three different documents or passages that are related to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. As you can see, they're fairly closely related. <laughs> you know, they have they have all of the words in them, so they are as we expect. Let's try a different query though. Say, how is pizza made? So you'll notice that the actual data we've pulled, and remember, it was only 10,000 samples we pulled from the uh, Hugging Face data set, doesn't have anything that's like super related to how pizza is made, but we still get the closest results, which are to do with food, right? So this is the power of our embeddings. Even if we don't have exactly the information, we're going to get the most related things in that particular uh, pool of embeddings, right? So it's a very powerful thing to augment search with, to be able to get context. Overall, this is a very fantastic thing that Cohere has done. And hopefully today you learned something if you didn't already know about embeddings or what they did. Uh, again, just to do the high level, basically we turn text into a bunch of numbers and then we can compare those numbers against each other to see which pieces of text are closer to each other or further than each other based on their meanings. Yeah, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please click uh, the thumbs up button and subscribe and uh, you know have yourself a wonderful day and we'll see you in the next one.